Hey guys, it's Sabrina with Minecraft by Sabrina. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a hatch fill in Inkscape so that you can do a complete color in or engraving pattern. The first thing I suggest is go ahead and open up Inkscape and make sure you have the extensions you need to go ahead and do this process. So we're going to go to the extensions menu, look through all of the extensions available, and then identify which one has the hatch fill option. You might have more than one and that's fine. They are all going to be the same. So as long as you have one of them that has a hatch fill, you're going to be good to go. First, I'll go over how to do it with text. I'm going to press the T on the keyboard and then draw out my text box. Type my name, highlight that, and then select a font from the font menu. Let's take a closer look at the text. If you look in the status bar at the bottom, it'll tell you the status for the current object that is selected. In this case, it's a text in a shape. So that's basically just written words. It's not a path and it's not cut ready to bring into design space. So we need to convert this to a path. We'll do that by going to the path menu and selecting object to path. Now, when we're talking about text, object to path is the equivalent to isolating letters in design space. So it went from being a shape to being one group with seven objects. Seven objects because there's seven letters. It's a group, so we're gonna ungroup it by going to object and selecting ungroup. It works just the same as in design space. And now you can see I have seven individual objects that are selected. Because they're individual, I wanna go ahead and weld it and make this one solid piece. So again, I'll go back to the path menu and this time I'm gonna select union. Now union is equivalent to weld and design space. Now you can see by my selection box, I have one object. It is now a path and it has 441 nodes. So now it's ready to go into design space. You can also perform these three steps in one simple motion by holding down the control and the shift button followed by C, G and the plus button. And that would do all three steps in one motion. Also, you need to do these three steps anytime you type in Inkscape and you plan on importing that into design space. Otherwise, it's not going to be ready and you'll get an error. With the text as a path, we're now ready to start the hatch fill process. Step one is to turn the fill off and the stroke on. Now, what does that even mean? So the fill is the actual color of the entire area of your object. And then the stroke is the color of the perimeter or the outline of that object. At the bottom left hand of the screen, you can see what is it set to. So my fill is set to black and my stroke is none. On the stroke, I'm going to right click and open that menu. I'm going to select swap fill and stroke. So now that inverted my fill and stroke. So my fill is now none and my stroke equals black. From the right side of the screen or by pressing Control Shift F, I'm going to open up the fill and stroke menu. And from here, I'm going to go to the stroke style. In the stroke style, I'm going to change the width of my stroke. Now, how do you know what width to set it to? You're going to set it equal to the width of the device or tool you're using. So if you're using the engraving tool or if you're using a pen, you're gonna set it to the size of that object. So I'm using a drawing feature and I'm gonna color it with a 0.4 millimeter tip. So that's what I'm gonna set it to. So I've set it to 0.4 mm's. Step two of the process is to actually apply the hatch fill. To do that, we're going to go to the extensions menu and select the extension that had the hatch fill option. Before we begin this process, I can't stress enough how important it is to set your project to the final size. The reason is this isn't a one size fits all hatch fill, so you can't stretch or change the size of your project after you've created it. In the hatch fill menu, there's quite a few things to look at. So we're going to click on the more info page because this is going to give us a description of what all these things mean. So let's look at them in detail so we're on the same page. The first thing is the hatch spacing. 
Now hatch spacing is the distance between each hatch line, and that's measured in pixels. This is the key reason why this isn't a one size fits all. If you set it to be at a 0.4 pixels or a 0.4 millimeters, which is equal to a 1.5 pixels, and then you stretch this out, your lines are gonna be much further apart than what you actually set them to be. Next is your angles, and the angle is just the degrees or the direction in which the lines are moving. You might wanna be strategic about this depending on what your project looks like. Let's say if you have a font that really angles in a certain direction, you might wanna also create your hatch fill to angle in that same direction. Cross hatch is an option that applies a second set of hatches. So with the regular hatching, it just gives you one set of lines. In this case, it's gonna give you a second set, but it's gonna set them perpendicular to the first set, creating you know, a bunch of crossed lines. And that's just gonna give you a much better fill. Next, we have the connect nearby ends. Now connect nearby ends, it's going to try and connect all the edges where it can to make it one continuous zigzag line. So when Cricut is actually doing this, it's going to draw every single line. So if your lines are not attached and it's just one single line, it's going to set the pen, draw, and lift the pen. Set, draw, lift, set, draw, lift for every single line. When it's a continuous zigzag line, it's going to set at the start of the zigzag, it's gonna zigzag all the way through and then lift at the end of the zigzag. So it's gonna make for a much faster fill. The next thing is the insert from edges. Now the insert option allows you to hold back from the edges. So because this is filling in the area of your object, this allows you to determine how close to the perimeter or to the stroke of your project is the fill pattern gonna go. So your hatch fill distance. How do you know what your hatch fill distance is gonna be? Again, this is gonna be the size of your pen tip, maybe even just under the size of your pen tip, just so that they overlap and you make sure you get that good fill. So, our, because it's measured in pixels, we need to convert what that pixel is. I know that I can find my pen size tip, and I've listed all the Cricut basic ones here. So if I use a fine point pen, which is a 0.4 millimeters, if I go to my stroke style menu where I selected the width of my stroke, and I change millimeters to pixels, it'll give me the equivalent of that measurement. So that's where I'm gonna gather how I'm gonna set my spacing. I'm also gonna set my angles, as I said, strategically. I'm not gonna do a cross hatch, especially with drawing, because I don't want it to rip through my paper. You know, think of a kid who colors too much in one spot, you end up ripping through the paper because of so much moisture. Um, I do want to connect nearby ends because you want it to go faster. And then range defaults to three, I leave it at that. And inset defaults to one, I lower it to 0.5 just to make sure it gets close enough to that edge. Again, before hitting apply, you need to make sure that your project has been set to size. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and it's gonna tell you that the hatch fill is working, please wait. After that's finished, it'll go away, and you'll just go ahead and hit the close box or the X box in order to move this away. Now you can see that there is a hatch fill, the lines, there's a fill pattern in there, and at the bottom, it tells you this is a group of two objects. I'm gonna ungroup, and then I'm going to move those objects apart. Now you can see the first one, it's just my original stroke, and then the next one is my actual hatch fill. Moving those back together, I'm gonna to now save this as an SVG file. I'm gonna to go to the Save As menu and just, it defaults to Inkscape SVG. I'm gonna leave it like that and click Save. Uploading it into the Cricut, we're gonna click the Upload button, 
upload again, and then go ahead and browse for my file upload my image. Now because it's an SVG file, there's no cleanup. So it automatically sends you right into the save page. So I'm going to save that and then select it and insert my project. Now that I have it on the project, I'm going to set this to an engrave type cut because I'm going to engrave it with my tool. So I'm going to select the objects and you can see that I have two. Again, one's my stroke and one's my hatch. I'm gonna go to my line type and change it to engrave. Then I wanna attach them together. I'm also going to attach it to a larger rectangle, which is where my project is gonna sit on. After it's attached, I'm ready to go and I'm gonna hit make it. On the Make It screen, I can see my pattern is there, and I'm going to mirror it because I'm going to make this on the back side of my project. I'm going to go ahead and send it off to the mat. I, I'm using um, a Dollar Tree cutting board mat, so I have it set to acetate. It's going to go ahead and engrave. You'll see it working here. and Just go ahead and follow the prompts. So here's what it looks like after it's been engraved. Now let's take a look at doing the hatch fill on some images. Before adding a hatch fill to an image, your image needs to actually be a path. Just like the text needed to be converted to a path, so does your images. Now, that's a little bit more of a complicated process. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to go through those steps. I already have mine converted as a path, but I will link in the description below my tutorial on how to convert, say, a coloring page from Google into a path for you to do this process with. So my two objects are currently paths. I'm gonna bring those back together and then we need to change our stroke. So remember we want our fill to be blank and our stroke to be on. So we'll do that by left click, by right clicking in the left bottom corner, the swap fill and stroke. Again, that's gonna swap or invert what the fill was to where the stroke now is and vice versa. We're going to go back to that fill and stroke menu by doing control shift F into the stroke style and then setting that stroke to the size of your pen tip. In this case, I'm going to do 0.3 millimeters. Next, we're going to go ahead and apply the actual hatch fill. Again, I cannot stress enough. You need to need to need to have your sized project to the final project. So again, going into the extensions menu, I'm going to press the hatch fill extension and then set my settings. I'm going to go ahead and set this to nine, a 45 degree angle with connecting ends and a 0.2 inset. Then I'm going to go ahead and click apply. After I've gone and applied it, I'm going to select my next layer. So I'm going to leave my hatch fill box open and I'm going to go ahead and apply again with the same settings. Now you can do this at the same time by selecting both pieces. However, depending on the size of those hatches, it might lag and take too much time. So you may want to do them separately like I just did here. Now that those are ready, I'm going to again save this. You can see my hatch lines there. We now bring it into design space. In Design Space, we're going to go ahead and upload this image. Again, it's going to just go ahead right into Save because it's a SVG file. Let's go ahead and put it on our project. In here, I'm going to have two things. I'm going to set the first two to draw, and then I'm going to set the next two to engrave because I want portions of it to engrave and I want portions of it to draw. So my black is going to draw, my pink is going to engrave, and then I have my base square that it's all attached to. Everything needs to be attached together. We're going to go ahead and make that. Here we go on the make it screen. Again, I have it mirrored because it's going on the back of my project. Because this is going to both draw and engrave, it's going to show you in your tools what's happening first. So first I have a gold pen and that's for the border. 
And really, I'm going to do what I call ghost writing. I'm not actually going to put the gold pen. It's just in there because I need my square in there and I don't want anything else to happen to it. So rather than drawing, I'm going to just remove that pen, let it cycle through, and then let it ask me for my black pen, which is going to come up next. Once it asks me for my black pen, I'll go ahead and set that pen and it's going to start drawing. After it finishes drawing, it'll go right into the engrave and it'll finish up an engrave and do any cutting that it has to do. Just keep following the prompts on your Make It screen. Once it's complete, we're going to unload that mat. And here you can see the final product. We have the engraved pattern and then we have the colored pattern. As you see, my engraving is not as tight as the color and that's because the engraving tip is much thinner than the marker tip, but I left it with the same fill pattern. Well, that's it guys. That's all I have for you today. I do want to thank you for watching. If this is your first time to my channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you found this helpful, share the love by sharing this with a fellow crafter friend. Thank you and happy crafting.